we got to talk to one more person tonight, I think. We're going to talk to James, who's calling in from Texas. James, you're live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Yo, Dan. Yo, Richard. How you guys doing on a happy Friday? Doing all right, man. Just, just, just hanging out, doing my thing. How about you? Rock and roll. Oh, enjoying life. About to have dinner with my Ooh. daughter here in a minute. Um, yeah, I just want to, uh, for all those who do believe what I'm about to say, it's not my uh, point to try to convince people not to believe. However, my statement stands true and will probably stand, stand true to me to the day I die. There is no God, there is no gods, and there is nothing supernatural. And I have a right. hypothesis. Okay. So, um, you know, I think different. we're on the same page with you so far, but go ahead. Yeah. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, all the definitions I've heard for a God that people believe in, it, it presents itself as something that is supernatural. So I question, how do you know what is supernatural if all that we have yeah. before us is our natural realm? <clears throat> so if this said God is supernatural, when and if we have the ability to, quote unquote, test and verify this question mark, that is the unknown, it's no longer supernatural because if we were able to test it, it now it comports to our natural realm. Therefore, it's not supernatural. So therefore, nothing supernatural ever exists. Nothing of a God quality will ever exist. So we all we have is our natural realm. And anything and everything within our universe is considered natural. Just because it's something that we cannot understand, why is it necessary for us to label it a God or label something supernatural? So mm-hmm. that's, that's my stance. Now, now James, I'm going to put on my apologist hat on here. It's not a very good looking hat. Please do. Um, in fact, it's quite ugly. I'll be honest. Uh, I would never wear it in public, but I'm putting it on here anyway. And, um, you know, I would say, James, you know, you're presupposing the natural, right? You're, you're presupposing naturalism, in fact. By presupposing naturalism as your foundation for your epistemic beliefs, you can't even leave in the room for the possibility of the supernatural. So if something supernatural did occur and your only methods of investigating it are through natural means, how would you know that it even happened? It would still be, I don't know. That's all there is to it. So, I'm, I'm, yes, I am presupposing the natural. And why not? When that's all that we have before us that we understand. There, there is yeah. yet to be anything that we can call and label supernatural. I, I really find that very baffling. Yeah. The, the, there was something right. very interesting that you said at the start of this call, which I, I, I want to pick up on, and you said that – all the explanations of God that you you've ever heard, what are we a discount in the? And then you followed that on with, so there are no gods. But what if there's an explanation for a God that you're not aware of and that doesn't fall into the category of supernatural? How how are you making the the statement that there are no gods? So, okay, I would question, so this anybody who's claiming a God that comports to their natural realm, why is it that this that this um, thing is a God? What would, be, what would be their definition for that God? And by all means, if they want to call it a God, I'll accept it. So, yeah, I find that interesting. I'm just saying most, most of the, uh, the standing um, belief is that it's a... Um, disembodied mind, a, a creator of all. And to me, that is something that is beyond our natural realm. That is supernatural. It's outside of space and time. How can something be outside of space and time, yet uh, react with our space and time? I find that very interesting. So, Yeah. yeah. I mean, interesting. If you go back to the start of the Hebrew Bible, that God wasn't uh, an incorporeal being. Uh, it, was, it was a physical being. That's that's yeah. what the people at the time in proto Judaism actually believed, and 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 those who were writing the Hebrew Bible thought that he was a, a giant and carved footprints representing him, and uh, gave him footstools and and features, and he had all these char- physical characteristics. So God hasn't always been even even the Christian God hasn't always been incorporeal. I think that that's that's come as the gaps it can fit into a shrank down and and uh, 
and and the evidence has shown that he's not been there. Yeah, that's kind of the problem, right, when apologists talk about this issue, because nine times out of ten, they're going to run with, well, God is this, like you said, incorporeal, um, you know, uh, being, he's, he's a mind without a body, right? Like, that's kind of how they describe it, which, uh, as you pointed out, a lot of the Bible doesn't actually describe God like that. Um, but, you know, they're going to say, well, you know, don't take into that stuff into account. We're just talking about basic definitions here. Of, of what we're describing here but, but quite frankly as you point out i don't know what we're talking about i don't know what we're defining now there's a lot of things out there that we may not have exact parameters or definitions for but we still know exist or at least have a, an intuitive understanding of consciousness for example there's been a lot of uh, propositions as to what that actually means there's been some definitions but out there i personally don't know of a be all end all one um i don't know if anybody does but like we still talk about that as something that exists maybe it doesn't exist i don't know i live my life like it is because it directly impacts me and and the lives of others and these concepts are useful a god concept not only isn't useful i mean it can be useful but is it useful for somebody like me but also can be the basis for harm <laughs> and you can do a lot of bad things with a god concept you know but even outside of the philosophical definitions of of, of god i mean to me you have to go beyond just arguing for it right you can come up with arguments all day but if you don't have good evidence for it and if we were defining evidence as things that can be examined by the natural then yeah i would be skeptical of it because again going back to the claims of christianity god intersects with the natural all the time god is uh, you know god did stuff he was on earth as jesus turning water into wine that's something we could look at that we could touch and you know what I guarantee you that um well, actually, I'm not going to go that far because I don't think the miracles actually happened. But like, you know, if you're an early follower of Jesus, you probably want to hear about the miracles, right? If Jesus just was talking about, oh, we should all believe in God because of this philosophical definition that I've come up with. I mean, I guess that's worked for some people, but probably not going to be as convincing as, look, I'm God. I changed. I, I brought this man back from the dead. I like duplicated these fishes and loaves. Check me out. You know, like that's that's personally going to be more convincing to me. I don't know. But anyway, saying a lot of things here, James, what do you think? Yeah, uh, those are all great stories. That, that, to me, mm -hmm. not to sound like an attorney, but that's all hearsay. It, like, I mean, it is. Make, those are just claims. Without, those are claims yeah. without any demonstration to back it up. And that's yeah. using the Bible yeah. to demonstrate the existence of a God or, or the existence that Jesus was was uh, the flesh of a god and it came down to earth and abolished our sins and died for us and rose again in three days those are all wonderful stories you know great you know that's yeah. all that's all i got to say to it and but yeah. and, and again i keep premising on those who live their life and they live a good life believing this by all means hearing my voice and hearing what i say i'm not trying to tell people to stop believing i just find it very interesting that those people who are adults believe this story yet they don't believe santa claus exists so i find that very interesting because it's very similar yeah. to the santa claus story it kind of is and, right i mean it is kind of a atheist stereotype to point out the relationship between santa claus <laughs> and and god but you know you're not wrong i mean like it is a story that's been told and if you tried to run arguments for the existence of santa i'm sure they probably tie in pretty similar with arguments for god out on that like kind of <laughs> base philosophy level but you know what can you do right james i don't know we can talk to people about it but i agree it's kind of hard to be like well if it's doing good for your life if i, if I take that away from you and something bad would happen right is it ethical then that's i don't know we've talked about that before and that that's a whole other can of worms i will say this i feel like i'm living a better life not just like mentally but also morally than i am now as an atheist than i ever was as a christian if anything my christianity influenced my bigotry towards gay people towards women and yeah towards i don't know lots of other groups too <laughs> so anyway that's all i think we have time for but thanks again james for calling in on that perspective and uh appreciate you calling in